Who has HD in your family? Our dad. Uh, my mother had HD. My uncle has HD and my grandmother had HD. My dad has it and my, my grandma had it, but she died from it. Um, my grandpa had it and he passed away a few years ago, so my mom and her two sisters are at risk. My grandma passed away from HD and then my dad currently has HD and then my sister just tested positive. Our dad has HD as well as our aunt, uncle, and one of my dad's cousins. Uh, and I think his mom and his grandfather had it as well. My mom passed away two years ago from it when she was 38 and my 19 year old sister is now symptomatic. My dad had HD and my sister has HD. How long has your mom had HD for? She was sick for about 15 years before she passed away. Almost 15 years, my dad, since he was diagnosed. For as long as I can remember. I mean, I grew up with her always having it and showing symptoms. What kind of symptoms does your dad have? He has um, movements. He has trouble eating. He, dro he drools a lot. He's in um, a wheelchair. Yeah, he sleeps a lot. He's in a wheelchair because he can't really walk too well anymore. Movement problems and behavior problems. She'll forget things. The movements all around. And he had trouble speaking too. Tends to slur her words. Um, the Korea is definitely big with her. You know, poor balance and coordination. A lot of twitching. Um, sometimes people th People used to think she was just a drunk. Her motions, she, she had really bad mood swings. When I was really young, she started off having like tons and tons of behavioral problems. Like she would just get in these rages and she'd be in the car and just be so angry and just flip out and just all angry all the time. Then she'd get really sad. So what do you find most difficult about HD? Being the parent to your parent. Becoming a parent for my mom and a caregiver for my mom, that was really hard. How it wipes out families. Watching the progression. Um, the easiest way, like when I explained people how it's affected me, it was like when it started getting bad, it was like watching her drown. Um, and, you know, it's you're watching from the beach, and it's like I can see you, and I can almost get there, but. If I go out there, it's going to be an issue, and you know, it's you, you're you're helpless standing on the beach. There's just nothing you can do. Have you provided care for your dad at any point? Whenever yes. she and sometimes. her go out, I help a lot. I, I sometimes even help when they're still. He gets home. him dinner. Yeah, I like get that. him dinner, and um, sometimes I take him downstairs, help him down the steps push him in his wheelchair when he's struggling to go to the bathroom by himself. I was basically, um, I continued to be her caregiver um, over time as her health declined. And, um, you know, it went from me just kind of being around the house, making sure that I could pick up things after her to, you know, me trying to get her to take her medicine. My sister and I collaborate and take care of him on a daily basis. Um, pretty much full time. I had to kind of put my career on hold. And is there anything that you used to do with your dad that you can't do anymore because of HD? Um, we used to go and cut down Christmas trees. He used to come with us to a lot more places. Like now, he really doesn't come out with us a lot. <laughs> like everything. She doesn't really want to go out at all anymore. Like she just wants to stay home because of apathy and depression and stuff. And how do you feel about being at risk? Uh, it's actually kind of scary because you don't know if you're going to have it or not, so you want to kind of live your childhood to the fullest. I don't know, I'm just kind of scared that I'll get it and I won't be able to do like a job that I really want to do. You know, if I wanted to be a surgeon or something, obviously that's not going to work. Being at risk is terrifying. It weighs on your mind every day of your life and having known about the disease since I was 10 or 11 years old, you, you just develop it as part of your life and it just it's a constant what if in the back of your mind all the time. So it, it's very overwhelming, I think is the right word. You see changes in, in my dad and, and then you're like, wow, you know, is, is, that, is, that, is that gonna be me? Is it really worth getting close to people if I could be taken away by this disease? Being at risk makes me feel a little upset knowing um, 
It's not curable. Has HD affected your schooling at all? Uh, a little bit. Like, I had, when I was younger, I'd get so caught up in how often my mother was yelling at me and how all the behavior affects. And I couldn't get my schoolwork done. And for the longest time, I just wouldn't do my homework because I didn't have time because it was always mom. It affected my grades a lot for a long time. Elementary school through high school, I didn't have very good grades. I probably made C's and B's, D's, you know, I was, I was average, I wasn't flunking, but I was really having a hard time. I mean, honestly, I wasn't learning a whole lot in school. I wasn't paying attention. Um, and I just thought that maybe I wasn't that smart. Um, you know, I didn't really have any big plans of me being, you know, going to graduate school. And, um, and then I realized over time, um, you know, the brain, I was, I was really depressed when my mom was in the heat of her disease and um, the brain cannot cope with things like, you know, going to school and trying to make friends and trying to learn history and trying to learn math. When, when, you're, when you're back at home trying to take care of a dying parent, essentially. So has HD impacted on you socially? Um, yes. It has. Um, I wouldn't say that I've lost friends over it, but I have certainly had, uh, I've lost relationships. It's kind of hard sometimes to explain to your friends that you can't um, like go this place or that place because, you know, I have to stay and, um, you know, even though my dad's there, you know, with my little sisters, I still have to be there, you know, to, to kind of watch my sisters. I was stuck home, like basically, like I would go to school, come home, um, take care of my mom from the time I got home till she went to bed and then repeat basically and I was home like every weekend taking care of her so I never really got the opportunity to get out and do stuff and even when I had the opportunity I was kind of hesitant because like I was one who took care of her most of the time so I f felt like if I left her I'd be like abandoning her and didn't know like if someone else would take care of her while I was gone. So, I don't know, it's really hard. So how does HD make you feel? Uh, <laughs> a lot of different, you know, emotions. You know, some, sometimes it makes me feel angry, frustrated, upset. It makes me feel mad because just these innocent people are given this disease that makes them lose their mind. And they're in a body that they know what's going on, but they can't control it. Like, I want to cry. <laughs> cry really hard and make it go away. It just sucks, like, watching somebody you love so much, and there's literally nothing. There's nothing you could do. I mean, there's some things you could do, but you can't just take it away. You can pray, but it just makes you feel horrible. It makes me feel a lot of grief. I feel, um, I feel so much pain over um, what my mom had to go through. I feel so much pain over how much I have lost, how much of my life I have missed because I've been dealing with this. So how do you feel when you come to a convention and meet other young people? Um, it makes me feel less alone because I know there's other people going through the same thing that I am. Inspired, I think, when we did the HD, HDO raps training. That was one of the coolest weekends I've had in a long time. It was just, it was amazing to meet people, young people with energy. It's like relief. It's like, kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm home. Like, oh my God, somebody understands. There's someone else that knows I'm going through because you feel so alone. It's like a bubble. You know, it's a nice little bubble here because we all can relate. But when you're at home, you know, with your friends, yeah, they'll be there for you, but it's not necessarily that they know exactly what's going on. So it's kind of just, you know, helping them feel comfortable and safe. It feels great to meet other people that are impacted by HD. Um, it just reminds you that you're not alone and reminds you that other people are dealing with what you're de dealing with and it can be done. And I think, you know, there's great power in numbers. And so I think it's great for organizations, you know, like HDYO and NYA to help us stick together. I love meeting young people impacted by HD. I think I feel inspired in one word, inspired. Why do you think young people in HD families need support? I think it's more of just 
because they wind up being caregivers. They do. HD, HD families with young people really need support because children growing up in these homes are so stressed. They become caregivers at early ages. They don't have, you know, like what you consider just a normal childhood in a sense where they're having to tell their friends, oh, when you come over, just ignore my dad lying on the couch. That's all he can do. And they just need to feel supported in their fight because not only do they have HD, but they just have regular teen stuff going on. And, and it can be so hard to deal with all those things at once. So having people their age with similar circumstances is totally key. Because they're just as affected as any other member of the family. A lot of us, like the great majority of people in HD families, we're all at risk. And it's really hard to have that burden on your shoulders too. It, we, we, we can't just fall apart too. Like we need to be healthy in ourselves even though our parents aren't healthy. We have to live our lives as well. And that's just really important for us and people, you know, we need to be supported in that way too. We need to be able to live our lives.